Blood Transfusions, What You Need to Know and Do. Episode 3, Transfusion Reactions. Marcus, hop in. We're going to a sickle cell support group meeting where we'll get to meet some other people who have transfusions like you do. (laughs) Welcome. We're glad you can join us. Please come in and have a seat. Gloria was telling us earlier that she got really sick when she had her last transfusion. Her doctor said it was a delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction. I understand that when you're sick, you really might not feel up to asking a lot of questions or taking in new information. So let's talk a bit about transfusion reactions now. Blood transfusions can sometimes cause uncomfortable reactions like fever, hives, rashes, or itching. These are unpleasant, but not dangerous. On the other hand, you can have a serious transfusion reaction if the blood that's given to you is not a close match to your own, and sometime in your past you formed an antibody to a specific donor antigen that your body didn't recognize. Remember, a close match means that any antigens on the donor's blood cells are also on the patient's blood cells. It's important for people with sickle cell disease to know their blood type and minor antigens, especially C, E, and Kel. But there's another important part of the story to remember. Antibodies. Your immune system keeps you healthy by fighting off germs like a cold or flu. Your body knows these germs are bad because they have antigens that your body does not recognize as your own. Your immune system creates antibodies to attack them and protect you. In the same way, if you get donor blood that has any antigen that you don't have, your body might make antibodies to it. The first time this happens, you might not get very sick. The big problem comes if you get blood with that same antigen again, even much later in your life. Then your immune system gets to work, cranking out that antibody which attacks the donor blood and makes you really sick. It is called a delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction if your body creates lots of antibodies that destroy the donor blood when you are exposed to antigens you had previously developed antibodies to. So antibodies fight off germs to keep us healthy, but antibodies can also break down donor blood if our body doesn't recognize it, right? That's right. This type of reaction is pretty rare and doesn't always happen when people get blood with different antigens from theirs, but it is so dangerous even sometimes deadly, that it is important to take steps to avoid it. The first goal is to never create an antibody in the first place. You want the donor's blood for every transfusion you get to match yours as closely as possible. So the first step, as I said earlier, is for you to know your blood type and minor antigens, at least C, E, and Cal. Before you get a transfusion, the hospital should test your blood for as many antigens as they can, given their equipment and the urgency of the situation. You can help by knowing or carrying a record of your blood type and sharing it with them. The second goal, if you ever do develop any antibodies, is to definitely let doctors know what antibodies you have, so they can then be sure not to give you blood that has those specific antigens. Mr. Till, won't they test Marcus's blood for antibodies before they give him a transfusion? Yes, they will. The only problem is that as time goes by, an antibody can sort of go into hiding. If it's been a while since the antibody was developed, it might not show up on the test, but still be there and cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. That's why your knowledge and records are so important. As a reminder, these are the things you should always know and keep an up-to-date record of to share if you need a transfusion, and they don't have access to your medical records. First, your blood type, including minor antigens at least C, E, and Kel, and any antibodies you ever created. Second, the name and phone number where you got your last transfusion. Doctors can call there to get information about you and your blood. Third, any transfusion reactions you have had before, so they can avoid them if possible. Not sure if you have antibodies? At the next visit, ask your doctor about your antibody status. Watch the other videos in the series to learn more about blood transfusions and what you need to know and do.